Alrighty. Good evening. Good evening on our Thursday evening live stream. Uh, hello, Abel. And I think I, I saw Ray on Facebook. He already commented he wanted to tune in and he was curious to learn more about uh, this infamous arm here. So <laughs> what I'm asking folks this evening is, have you ever seen the boot of Benedict Arnold? Well, what about the leg of Santa Anna? Did you know, I didn't know this, <laughs> that you can also visit the leg of Civil War General Dan Sickles and even the heart of King Richard I, AKA Richard the Lionheart. While you may not have heard of visiting some of those famous appendages or body parts, perhaps you have heard of the separate burial site of Stonewall Jackson's arm. Yes, that famous Confederate general who stood there like a stone wall at the Battle of Bull Run was not buried with his left arm. In fact, he outlived it by just over a week. So join us this evening as we talk about the strange story of Joan Stonewall Jackson's left arm and how he lost it at Chancellorsville. Welcome to Talk With History. I am your host, Scott, here with my wife and historian, Jen. Hello. On this podcast, we give you history-inspired, we give you insights into our history-inspired world travels, YouTube channel journey, and examine history through deeper conversations with the curious, the explorers, and the history lovers out there. Now, before we get into our main topic, I've got a couple things I want to cover. Um, there's our our newsletter over at historynewsletter.com has doubled and almost tripled in size in the past month. It's pretty incredible. So if you guys are curious, um, we're excited to share more interesting history articles and other recommendations there that we may not be able to share on this podcast or in our video. I really do encourage you guys to go check it out. Um, historynewsletter.com, you can sign up for free. It's once a month. We don't spam folks, historynewsletter.com. And last but not least, I want to give a shout out to YouTube uh, subscriber and viewer, um, Leo G. He gave us a recent super thanks on our Arlington 2 video. That video has been picking up some steam. So he gave us a super thanks. We really do appreciate that. And this is the video, the one with Gunny Ermy on the thumbnail. So Leo, your contribution has helped the show keep running and growing. And we really do appreciate you guys' support. So... Jen, why don't you, yeah, Doug, <laughs> happy I, we mentioned Dan Sickles, Dan Sickles' uh, leg. Was it leg? Yeah, it's, it's his leg. leg not yeah, his arm. It's, it's his leg. Yeah. Um, so what are we talking about tonight? So we're talking about Stonewall Jackson's arm. Right. Specifically that he's buried without it. And yes. it's buried in a separate location. So can you, again, set the scene for chancellorsville kind of what's going on just before yes. and then up into that and how this how this all happens so chancellorsville is a is a couple day long battle it's not oh hello mick uh so it's it's not like a one day battle it's a couple day long battle and it's a confederate win and stonewall jackson is leading that battle it's in the virginia area mm -hmm. and they will have a couple battles in that general area further on down in the Civil War. But that first day is successful for the Confederacy. And in the evening, Stonewall Jackson is riding along the line at night. And it's a dark night. Was it a dark night or was it a light night? What did we say? It was dark. It was that's a dark what, that's night. Why they, that's, that's why it happened. And he's riding along and he comes across the North Carolina the 18th North Carolina and they yell out and he's with his, his aides. You can imagine it's not just him by himself. He's with his aides. And he's got a whole aunt, like a, like four or five people with him. Yes. I mean, four or five people die. So he probably has like 10 people with him yeah. and the 18th Carolina yell halt. Who's there. But before they can answer, they just start shooting. <laughs> and so then they say, stop, you're firing on your own men. Stop. We ain't, we're not Yankees. And they don't believe them. They think they're lying. And so they, they fire some more. Uh, okay. And so they end up killing several men, Stonewall Jackson's men. And I tried to look up the names of those men. So if anyone knows the names of those men, I would be interested in that because you would think that would be folklore saying I died. Or our family member died the night that Stonewall Jackson sure. lost his arm. Yeah. But Stonewall Jackson is hit three times uh, in his twice in his left arm, uh, halfway between his elbow and his shoulder, and then in his left wrist. And then he's left. He's hit in the right palm of his hand as well. And if you remember from the first battle of Bull Run, he's also shot in his hand. 
he's uh, he's shot in his right hand and through his finger, and that's what he wraps up and kind of holds on his um, side when he's side doing the pose. when he's posing oh, there. Interesting. So, um, so it seems like he gets hit in his arms kind of often, but anyway, he gets hit three times uh, and it basically shatters his left arm. Yeah. yeah. And so this is the night of May second, and more than likely. They've shot in his horse, and uh, I don't think they actually did kill his horse, but they more than likely he doesn't have a horse now because they carry him on a stretcher. Oh, okay. And the this is another thing that's going to cause his demise. He's carried on a stretcher and he's dropped twice from stretcher height. Oh, really? And he's dropped so hard on his side that he has very bad bruising on his side, and this is what they think contributes to his pneumonia. Oh, because that's what gets him later. Yes, because he's so injured in his side, and it's starting to, you know, release liquid and and blood, and so right. interesting. So they they get him to a hospital tent, and if you watch our video, we not only go to where the gunshots happened that shattered his arm, we go to the hospital tent where his arm is amputated, and his arm is amputated by Doctor Hunter McGuire, and we've gone to Hunter McGuire's grave. Yep. Hunter McGuire is a very well known doctor in the civil war and not just confederate doctor he is the one who's going to write to president abraham lincoln when doctors are captured and he's going to have this program called the winchester accord which is very the very first um non-combatant article okay where he he makes a case to president lincoln we should release doctors on both sides when they're captured so kind of just like that 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 um, what do you call it? Like kind of rule of engagement. Yes. Where, hey, if they're on yes. there with the with the, yes. the Red Cross, and then they or can help either side. Like they they you don't have to release them right away. Just release. They're not prisoners, and they'll just help. Oh, and they say that because he did that, and because Lincoln was like, yes, he right away released the Confederate doctors, and the Confederacy released Union doctors. They say that they saved so many more lives because than would have been that. lost because oh, of that. So Hunter McGuire did that. Huh. And Is so, that the statue that we saw in Richmond? That's the statue we saw in Richmond. Okay. That's the grave we went to in Richmond. And he amputates Jackson's arm. Yeah. And he's also Jackson's personal doctor. He's going to be with him when he gets Jackson's last words. He's also at the surrender at the well, Battle and, of... And, and one thing to remember, too, is at this point in the war, right, it's been about almost two years... Yes. And and he is Stonewall Jackson. I mean, he has the name. He has the reputation. Exactly he is true. this legend mm-hmm. for the Confederate. He's on both sides, mm-hmm. right? It's not just for the Confederacy. Yeah. You know, on the other side, they're like, oh my gosh, like we're going up up against the stone wall. I'm sure there were soldiers that were like they were were dread that. Yes. Like, they they would hear they're going up against, you know, Stonewall Jackson and, and that carries so much weight. And so that's why this was kind of such a big deal. Yeah. So Stonewall Jackson He's the class of 1846 at West Point. Okay. And he's teaching at VMI from 1851 to 1861. So 10 years he's taught at VMI. Yeah. And then when the South secedes in May of 1861, he joins. And it's in July of 1861 that he gets the reputation of Stonewall Jackson. So it's not even two months yeah. after the war because it's that first battle of Bull Run. That he gets that reputation. Can you imagine? I mean, that just that thought just popped in my head. Like, imagine being one of his students, right? And all of a sudden, you here's your teacher, and like you hear this like massive reputation, right? How like I am sure there's plenty of young Southern men soldiers that were ins- truly inspired by that. Um, you just th- thinking about putting yourself in their shoes, and not not calling one side or the other, but that's one of the things we try to look at is what was it like? Yes, you know. And just it's interesting thinking about that. Well, you, the other things I found interesting were it, it's General B who makes that statement. Look, look at him standing there like a stone wall right. rally up behind the Virginians. They don't know if that was meant to be a compliment or if he was like mad at him. Oh, interesting. And uh, because B gets killed. Right. And they never get a chance for him to clarify his statement. Huh. So some people say he's mad. Like, look at him just stand there while sure. we're trying to defend everything. Or it could be look at him standing there, get behind him. He He's given us a lot of uh, morale right now. Yeah. So and another thing I found interesting is that all this time, Jackson is wearing his blue union 
uniform. He doesn't get the gray uniform until 1862. Oh, really? So even when he gets the Gravitation Stonewall Jackson, he's, he's wearing a blue. He's wearing the blue because you Army. talked about in our mm-hmm. other video that they hadn't really settled they on the blue versus gray. Yet. Yes, they had, and this is like two months after they seceded. Right. So they haven't had time to like switch out uniforms and everything. So yeah, so moving back to Chancellorsville. Yes. He got shot. He got dropped a couple times because it's probably the middle of the night. Middle of the night, trying to get him to a medical tent. Right. And so it the he gets shot late on May 2nd gets to the medical tent as you can see pretty far away by foot early early morning May 3rd so it's about 2 a.m. his arm is amputated yeah we're showing if if you're listening we're showing on the live stream a kind of a a picture of where Jackson was injured and where they actually amputated his arm and even driving it's a couple miles yes right so think about these guys carrying him in the middle of the night I can understand why they, they probably dropped him yes um, because they're you're hitting a random ditch and all of a sudden someone falls over and they accidentally drop drop that yes um, yeah Doug it was the 18th North Carolina that fire on Jackson uh, it, I don't think it's a couple of soldiers either but it was a uh, um, it was an entire company of men because it yeah. was a lot of, I mean, think about how many he has with them. Yep. And then and Doug brings up a great die, point. They know, it's, it's the fog of war. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a, kind of a classic term uh, in warfare. So th- when he gets to the medical tent, Hunter McGuire is amputating limbs. Like it's not, Mc- Jackson's arm is not the only limb he's Cause, amputating. Cause they have like I, a pile outside. They have a pile outside. So that's what happens. That's crazy. And you get Reverend James Power Smith who comes in in the morning and sees that General Jackson's arm has been amputated and he asks, where is the arm? And they say, you know, McGuire says it's outside in the pile. Now, I think probably to distinguish his arm, maybe he put it off to the side or maybe he still has the general clothing on it. I'm yeah, not really sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how he was able to distinguish, but somehow he was able to distinguish that that was General Stonewall Jackson's arm. Yeah. And his brother-in-law lives in a plantation as you, you can see on the map, like right across the field. Yep. So it's not even Elwood House is the Levy Plantation, his brother. Yeah, um, I, again, if you're listening, Chaplain if you're listening, um, I encourage you, one, to, to kind of look this up. I'll put it in the podcast uh, notes description, a link to the video. Um, but it's, you know, Jackson was injured much further away. His arm was actually amputated at the hospital tent. And like you said, essentially across what we drove across the, the way. Um, but probably it was probably like less than a mile. Less than a mile. Yeah, less less than a mile. Yeah, you know, over to this over to this farmhouse, Mm -hmm. um, to the to the Elwood house. To the Elwood house, where they would ultimately uh, take his arm. And they take his arm and they bury it that day. And it's not marked, but they give it a Christian funeral. They read from the scripture as they bury it, and they bury it in their family cemetery, their family plot there. And then Jackson is moved away from the battle uh, to to keep him safe, and he's moved to Guinea Station. He's moved down to uh, the Chancellor home and he's not even moved into the home. He's moved into their back like office shed. Right. Mm-hmm. And he th- that's where he will eventually die eight days later. But they want to move him away. Now, the Battle of Chancellorville will be a Confederate win. But Lee sends a message when he hears of the of Jackson having his um his arm amputated and he knows that he um could be dying he says give general jackson my affectionate regards and say to him he lost his left arm but i my right yeah and that is the kind of those saying that goes with this whole demise because as most people know this is a real turning point for the confederacy because of what Jackson brought for morale, but it wasn't just morale. It's what Lee and Jackson had together. Yeah, they they were both, and and I think pretty much all historians agree, and mm-hmm. um, even anecdotally they'll say like both of them are great military minds, great strategists, yep. right? And so that combined with how long they'd been in and their stature, um, and then their reputation at the same time, and some of the successes that they had. Again, if we go back to the Battle of Bull Run, nobody expected the Confederacy to win that battle. No. Um, I mean, especially on the Union side. <laughs> so it just, it, it caught everybody flat-footed. So it was a drastic shift in momentum at the Battle of Bull Run. And so the first couple years of, of the Civil War, I mean, the, the South really had some 
really serious momentum. And that was Jackson. And the thing that Lee and Jackson have together, and I think the thing that Lee loves about Jackson, is Lee can basically tell Jackson his end game. Yeah. He's like, this is what I want. Yep. And Jackson will get it done. Yeah, I'll, I'll go figure it out. And he figures it out. Yeah. And that's and people said Jackson was very quiet. He didn't really tell people his tactical plans, but he knew what Lee wanted yeah. from whatever battle he was in. He knew what what Lee's outcome was. And so he would make that happen. And that made Lee, he trusted him. Yeah. So he felt like, I don't have to give him the step-by-step. I tell him what I want. He goes and executes. Yeah, and what's interesting now is, too, it, you know, we'll talk about actually being there and filming the video. Mm-hmm. So there's two markers. There's two markers. We, we, found, the, we found the two markers. We kind of had to, like, traipse through the, you know, we had to be really careful, tell the kids to stay in the car. We're, like, walking <laughs> along the freeway to yes. get to the one where he was wounded. The other one where his arm was actually amputated yes. was a little bit easier. It's by like a winery now. It's, yeah, it's by by a winery. And, and it's, actually, it's it, on the battlefield. In the video description, I believe I put a Google Maps link mm-hmm. if you ever want to go visit. I'm pretty sure I marked all the spots where we were. Yes. And then the Elwood Manor. So it was actually, normally you can drive up to it, I think more in like the tourist season. Yes. But, it, it was gated off. You could still walk to it. Right. Um, and, and that's what we did. That's what we did. But we walked it's like maybe a quarter mile, mm-hmm. but it was like. 45 degrees it was cold it was really it was really cold (laughs) kids were troopers but elwood house i mean it's a decent sized house and one of the things about elwood house was there were um like a year later a bunch of the union used it as headquarters for a while yeah so another you know these these areas are kind of used over and over again you think of bull run and the battle of manassas right i tell you like there's two battles there and people will call it the first battle of manassas or the first battle of bull run and the second battle of manassas like you don't know and so chancellorsville another battle that happens in that general area is the battle of wilderness yep and during the battle of wilderness you get the union setting up headquarters at Elward House. Yeah, and the the marker for Jackson's arm didn't come till the early 1900s. Yeah, 1903. And so they they may not have even realized that hey, <laughs> Stonewall Jackson's arm is buried like 20 yards from here. Yeah, so like if you go to Elward House, the the cemetery is just right outside. Yeah, it might be 50 yards away. Right, and right by a big oak tree. Yeah, and it's a family plot. They say now that the markers for the family are no longer there, but I'm sure at that time they were. Sure. And the arm isn't marked. Where today, just the arm is marked, yeah. and there's no family markers. Um, now, there's folklore that the arm has been dug up mm-hmm. more than once, but even in this, like the 70s. Yes, but yeah. everybody. But from what I read, they still think the arm is there in that cemetery, just not where the marker is today. Right. And the uh, National Park Service is not going to dig and look for it. Yeah. And then last. Last but not least, we went to the place where he actually died. Where he died. And so that, um, on the map, they actually call it like a Stonewall Jackson shrine. I didn't really see it as a shrine. It was basically just like a house. Yeah, it's like um, the, it's it's a little farmhouse. It, it was, like I said, the the office storeroom for the yep. Chancellor Plantation. It was a plantation. Yeah. And so Jackson doesn't want to go in the house and bother the people. They put him in this, they make him as comfortable as they can. Yeah, in and, that, and I think at that point, he's like hallucinating. He, He's for like, the first couple of days, he doesn't. And then when the pneumonia sets in, yeah. he really starts to hallucinate. Yeah, he starts like giving orders to people, acting like he's on the battlefield. Yes, and, and he's with Hunter McGuire. His doctor is with him. His wife will make it to his bedside before he dies and their young daughter. Oh, that's She's right. there with him. And his final words are to Hunter McGuire. He says, let us cross over the river and rest beneath the shade of the trees. Which, and, which is interesting, like to, for that to be your last words. It's a very I think it's biblical. Like, it's very poignant. Yeah, Henry McGuire said he got like a a, a smile on his face because he was very like agitated yeah. before that because, he, like you said, he was like given battle orders, right. going up, uh, going up the hill and do this and do. And then Hunter said he got like a smile on his face and then said, you know, let's cross over the river and rest beneath the shade of the trees. And that line has inspired. Even Ernest Hemingway uses that line oh, really? in the opening of one of his books. So it's like that that lives in American history too. That Stonewall Jackson's last words were this kind of, you know, uh, I'm gonna go rest. Pleasant, yeah, yeah, rest. My time is done. I'm gonna rest beneath the shade of the trees. Like that. It's it's a very um, historic thing to say. Yeah, that's it was very interesting. And and being out there, we were it was like 
February for us. Yeah. So a lot of times, it wasn't open. Times, nothing, <laughs> nothing was open. You know, but, but we the, show you everything. But we get to show you everything. Mm-hmm. We kind of peek, peeks inside the windows a little bit. And again, just being around in that area where there was Union troops going all throughout and Confederate troops going all throughout. I mean, all this area, we were just driving around in circles trying to find things. You know, that's that's where the war was happening. And it's interesting where he dies at Guinea Station. He dies May 10th, 1863. It's right on a railroad line Yep. because the railroad came by right when we were there. So after he dies, you know, they can put his body on the the train car and he goes back to Richmond and his body lays in state at the governor's mansion at, at um, Jefferson Davis's house. Yeah. Which, which we have a video on, which we've been there. So yeah. you can imagine Stonewall Jackson's body laid at, laid at rest there. And then he was buried in uh, Oak Grove cemetery in Lexington. And his wife was given the option to dig up the arm and bury him with his arm. And when she heard that the arm had a Christian funeral, she said, "Better, better to leave it at rest." Yeah. So that's why he's not buried with his arm, as she decided. And she never remarries. She is considered the widow of the Confederacy. Oh, she gets. So a, does she kind of have that title? She has that title. She writes two books about Jackson. Oh, interesting. Um, and that's that's how she's kind of a martyr for the rest of her life. Yeah. But uh, it was just a very interesting, the quick demise of Jackson. Like it's a it's fast and it happens by his own men. Yeah. Which I find interesting because so much of what Jackson did to to boost morale and put the air into, you know, the the sails yep. of his fellow men, th- they completely sucked the air out of the sails with his death. Yeah. Because he was killed by his own men, his arms amputated, he dies 8 days later, and that's it. And there have been historians who conjure like if he was at Gettysburg would it have made a difference? Yeah. Because that first day, the Confederacy wavers and doesn't take Cemetery Ridge when they actually could have because the Union were regrouping. And Lee has said, like, he would have known if he would have told Jackson, I want that ridge. He would have made it happen. Yeah. Instead of the Confederate general at the time was like, oh, no, we, we kind of hemmed and hot a yeah, little bit. Yeah, we probably shouldn't do that. Um, and I think that, you know, losing Jackson is really what starts to undo the south yeah and lee was right he lost his right hand man and jackson still lives on in infamy just like we went into uh bull run but even when we went to richmond virginia his statue was there oh yeah beside uh hunter mcguire yep right in the capital of richmond virginia yeah right right there right there smack in the middle of everything Mm -hmm. um it was it was kind of a neat one to do because where the where the arm is buried where the elwood manor house it's it's not close to too much um, no it, it we i mean we had to kind of very intentionally go out there it's not like it's a quick trip away i mean i guess if you lived in richmond it was probably maybe 30 40 minutes from richmond um yes but we had to like very specifically go out there it's kind of in the middle of nowhere <laughs> there's not much around there there's Be- some wineries yeah you know yeah that's pretty much that's it. pretty much it if you're going to like maybe the battlefield of wilderness you would see it sure uh I would say more people. We we saw nobody at L at L Woodhouse. Right. More people were stopping at the the death site of yep. of Jeff. Uh, easier Stonewall to easier, a little easier to get to. And they have a big sign on this on the interstate, the main interstate, that says Don't, Stonewall Jackson Death Site. Yep. So I think more people saw that and pulled off and and wanted to go see the death site. And like I said, it's a house. It has it has a stone there. It has some little information yeah, some panels typical kind of you know national park mm-hmm. kind of informational things but that's about it yeah. it's not it's not like too exciting and then I, if it's open you can see like a bed frame in there and other things but yeah it's pretty basic but it was neat to tell that entire story and that demise especially since we've been to bull run especially since we've been able to kind of follow his legacy from where he made his name to where he ba- ended up losing it. Right, right, where he lost his name and, and kind of an interesting kind of sub niche of history of these like famous appendages that mm-hmm. were forever separate, forever separated from the famous person that they used to be attached to. And it's funny how these appendages get their own story. Right. Right? Like they, these appendages actually live on on their own yeah. without who they're connected to. Uh, Jefferson Davis for a very long time, I mean Jefferson Davis, I'm sorry, Stonewall Jackson for a very long time 
will be celebrated in Virginia. His birthday is a holiday for mm. a very long time until they switch uh, it to election day. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. So he's very much like s- still seen as as the hero of the South. And if you go into VMI, you go into that area, his home is still preserved. You can go visit his home. His horse is buried at VMI, uh, close to where the statue is at a VMI. Like, what's his horse's name? Is it I think the, it's like Old Sorrel or something. Something like that. Okay. So when you go, if you ever go to um, Stone Mountain in Virginia and they have the carving of Lee and Davis and Jackson on their horses. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Stonewall Jackson's on his horse. Yeah. Well, again, th- this was just a, another one of those neat ones because it's such an interesting story all by itself. Like you said, it that story of his le- of his left arm really kind of just is a story in and of itself. It lives by itself attached to, you know, not physically, but, you know, attached to this famous, this larger than life character and, and this interesting story and all these interesting little kind of folklore and People said this in the 70s, some Marines were out there, maybe dug it up and gave a 21 gun salute and then reburied it and <laughs> all this crazy stuff. Like start Google, Google some of the stories around Jackson's left arm sometime. And uh, I, I think you'll have a good evening at home kind of just <laughs> smiling. So legends of the past are often seen as larger than life, succeeding at every turn, overcoming insurmountable odds and almost invulnerable to injury or death. In the early part of the Civil War, no one fit that description better than Stonewall Jackson. But if you've been paying attention, Jackson was only that larger-than-life character for barely half of the Civil War. His loss was so significant that even General Lee wrote, Jackson has lost his left arm, but I have lost my right. So thank you for listening to the Talk With History podcast, and please reach out to us at our website, talkwithhistory.com, but more importantly, If you know someone else that might enjoy this, please share it with them, especially if you think today's topic would interest a friend. Shoot them a text and tell them to look up the Talk With History podcast or send them a link to this live stream video. We rely on you, our community, to grow, and we appreciate you all every day. Thank you. So I see greetings from Richmond. Thank oh, you for cool. joining us. The yes. historic capital of the Confederacy. We've yes. been to we, we went, Jefferson Davis's home. Yeah, we went a couple times. We did... One from the from Jefferson Davis home. Yeah, and we've done the Capitol, the courthouse. Hollywood, it was, it was, it Hollywood we've done Cemetery. Hollywood Cemetery. We did Hollywood Cemetery. I want to do um, Calendar, the story about um, the writer who gets drowned in the river. <laughs> I think you told me briefly about that, but me not knowing too much about it, I probably probably didn't remember too much. Thanks, Doug. Yeah, we uh, that that was a that was a fun one. Yeah, visiting these battlefields and. Um, again, this wasn't quite a battlefield. It was just everybody wants to go see this this interesting story. So, um, yeah, it's really neat to uh, to go there and see <laughs> a tombstone for an arm. Yeah, uh, and it just lets you know more about the man and more about the myth and more about what that what that meant for the South. Yeah, and actually, it's all those appendages that I kind of the famous ones that I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. Um, in the newsletter for April, I'm going to put some interesting articles about that. Yeah. Um, so if you're curious, head over to, to historynewsletter.com um, because that's going to be one of the articles that I that I kind of share a little bit more. Yeah, in depth. I'd be interested. Benedict Arnold's leg is considered the hero of uh, Saratoga. Yeah. I think his boot is more just like symbolic. I don't like. I don't think well, they he kept well, his leg. No, anymore. they didn't. He hurt his leg. He fell and was? hurt and his that's leg. That's why they put the boot there. And that's why they put the boot boot there. And they believe, you know, and. For history lovers out there, you know, we wouldn't have won Saratoga without Benedict Arnold. Without Benedict Arnold, the French wouldn't have joined the American Revolution. Right. He is very pinnacle to America becoming a, a free a, a country. Um, and then when he... And he's a traitor. He's a traitor because yeah. his wife kind of talks him into it. Um, he, earns the, he earns that, you know. But they consider his boot or his leg, since it was injured there the hero oh yeah it's a, it's a whole thing, <laughs> it's a whole thing. You just look it up right there's a statue to a boot and it's it's really interesting yeah so that's so. that's a that's a story too and uh we'll definitely go to saratoga and tell it but i just was very interested about the the jackson arm yeah that classic and actually it's, it's the video is actually done decently well mm-hmm. you know on our, on our channel people seem to be interested and to think hunter so. mcguire who was 
Jackson's personal doctor, stays with him the entire time. Hunter McGuire is also going to be at the surrender of Appomattox. Oh, wow. He's going to be at the courthouse that day. So huh. he's kind of a, an important I figure. Want, I wonder where he's buried. In the, we went to his grave at Hollywood Cemetery. Oh, that was at Hollywood Cemetery. Yeah, Hunter okay. McGuire. Yeah. I forget all these. <laughs> I make the videos. I'm not the historian. Yeah, he was a bit of a, a eccentric, Rick. He was always chewing lemons. Really? They said you would rarely see Jackson without a lemon in his mouth. He used them for indigestion. Oh, that's interesting. And people would say they had no idea how he got his lemons. <laughs> but he seemed to always have a lemon, which probably wasn't good for his teeth when you think about it. That's that's strange. <laughs> he's, he's an interesting character. Does anyone else know anything kind of interesting about Jackson? Um, yeah, his descent is still survived today. He had two daughters. They went on to have children. Yeah. Their his uh, his male descendants have gone on into the military, gone to West Point. Oh wow! Um, served in the wars, and actually, we had talked about this a little bit. Patton uh, had two photographs on his desk. Right, it yeah. was Lee and Jackson, and he said it's uh, God and Jesus, <laughs> and that's how he saw them. <laughs> wasn't wasn't Patton like? Distantly he, related somehow. Or something. He lived down the street from That's the right. Davises. That's right. Oh, maybe it was a picture of Davis and Jackson. It was like Patton's. Yeah. You, you know his, his family. His, his family tree mm -hmm. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, grew up down right. the street from Jefferson That's Davis. Right. Well, thank you again, everybody. I, I really do appreciate uh, you know folks jo joining us on the live streams and and joining us. Um, VMI students didn't care for him. Oh, that's interesting. So he taught for ten years. We did we did say he taught from 1851 to 1861 at VMI. He was a hard teacher. Teacher. Oh, interesting. He wasn't very well liked. So maybe it was the other way around than than what I said, because I, you know, because I, I kind of guessed. Oh, you know, maybe they were inspired when they heard he got this reputation. Maybe, maybe it was like two years later when he finally got shot. They were like, "Yeah, he deserved it." Now, oh, and he, I hear, uh -huh. and I hear, I read he was a relentless at drilling his troops. Oh, interesting. So even he, he That's was probably why they did so well. Well, right. Back we talk then. about that with Band of Brothers, yeah. right? Like because their captain kept making them climb that hill with all their gear on. They were like overly prepared. They were overly prepared, yeah. and in Jackson's, he kept drilling his troops, and so they probably didn't like that. But when it comes to battle, you're thankful. Yeah. But yeah, I heard he wasn't very well liked. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> I guessed wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why that's why she's the historian so <laughs> all right well thank you again everybody mick it's always great uh, yes. seeing you joining us on the facebook stream fellow uh, and abel i'm glad we finally got to the topic that uh that you wanted to hear about you know we've been wanting to do this for a couple weeks because we actually put this out a couple weeks ago so hope you guys join us again potentially next week and um we'll see you guys next time yeah thank you thanks guys